Okay, so this is segment three of our FSCV uh, kind of overview. So in the last segment, we covered kind of background subtraction, and then we looked at why the peaks are so widely shifted and discovered that's because of the scan rate being much faster and outrunning electron transfer. Uh, but um, there are other things that we can notice um, from here uh, that are different than uh, uh, the slow scan CV uh, that, that you might be used to seeing. Again, a slow scan CV typically looks something more like this, um, uh, which again has this duck bill. Uh, that, that people often say it looks like a duck. And so we're going to call it the duck bill. Um, uh, and you might notice that when we went to FSCV of uh, dopamine, now we lost that feature. We don't have anything that looks like a duck bill. Um, and so this brings us to a really important point um, of, a big, uh, of a big point of emphasis of FSCV, particularly for uh, dopamine. Uh, and that is that uh, dopamine at least at carbon electrodes, is what we call adsorption control. I swear as I go on for the rest of the lecture, if you don't know the answer to a question, you could just answer adsorption, and you would probably get it right. Um, uh, because I have, I have these like little features, I was like, the last one was scan rate, and all of the rest of them our absorption. Um, uh, so it's like, you know, there's one main concept that's going to override here. Uh, this is going to be the absorption segment of the lecture. Uh, so we're going to talk about absorption. Um, uh, and so uh, what does it mean to be absorption controlled? I like to steal this kind of textbook diagram uh, where this is what means is, this is what electrode is, the electrode surface. And so when we talk about kinetics, and again, we're not going to do a full kinetics lesson here. We have dopamine out in solution and we want to oxidize it. Well, obviously, we only ever oxidize something right at the electrode surface. All right, you know, that's one of the call marks of electrochemistry. If it's not at the electrode surface, it doesn't happen. So we got dopamine going to dopamine orthoquinone at the electrode surface, but maybe dopamine's hanging out over here. Uh, and so there's a couple processes that, that can occur, right? It, it needs to get to the electrode surface. Um, to do that, right, and so that we call diffusion. Um, we're going to pretend we're not stirring here so there's no convection. Uh, so we've got to get it to the surface. Even if there is convection, there's still diffusion at the end. So we've got dopamine diffusing in close to the electrode surface. Once it's close to the electrode surface, though, there's a very special process that happens at our um, carbon fiber electrode, and that is the dopamine, we're going to call this one dopamine sol for dopamine being in solution, now needs to actually adsorb to the electrode surface. So, uh, so I called it dopamine adsorb uh, there. So we're gonna adsorb it from the solution onto the electrode uh, surface. So this, it turns out that each of these has like, again, a rate constant. And for uh, uh, the uh, FSCV, it turns out that this is the slow step. So it turns out that it can diffuse to our electrode. That's faster than for it to kind of orient itself in the right direction and then stick on to the electrode. So everything we talk about then in, if you would, again, were to read a conventional textbook that talks about conventional psychic voltammetry, it's all good. But it assumes that there's either no absorption step or that the diffusion is the slow step. So I said before, about two segments ago, when we were talking about slow scan CV, that this duck bill, uh, you know, that, that it starts to come back down here because we're using up the dopamine that was really close to the electrode, but that there's still other dopamine that's diffusing in. So this is diffusion controlled, and you know, we're still doing oxidation, as I said, even when we come back down because we're still, stuff is diffusing in and we're at a potential that can happen. So this is a characteristic shape then of diffusion control. But we don't have a, the same uh, shape up here uh, for our FSCV voltammogram. Uh, and so that's because it's adsorption controlled. And so for adsorption control, it's a little bit of a different process. So we have to think about it um, as a basically, again, as something being stuck to the electrode. And we're going to only, now we're going to only do our redox if it's adsorbed 
to the electrode. And again, we're going super fast. Like this up and back, I don't think I've given the time length, only takes about 10 milliseconds uh, for this. So we're going super fast. Uh, and so there really isn't a lot of absorption happening during this process. Uh, it's mainly happening beforehand, uh, which we'll talk about. So we're only going to do a redox if it's absorbed to the electrode. Uh, and so what happens is, as I start to go out, once I reach the potential where I can do the oxidation and there's enough time for the electron transfer to have happened, uh, I start to uh, uh, um, oxidize dopamine and I'm still at a potential sufficient to do it, but my peak comes back down to zero, to baseline, and that's because down here all of the absorbed dopamine is now gone to dopamine north equinum. All used up. It's all gone. I don't have time to absorb more. I'm not at the correct potential to absorb more. So it's all used up. So it's like it's a limited amount of stuff, right? I'm not going to re, no more stuff isn't going to come in and I'm not going to be able to do it. So it's all used up. So what we get is a very symmetrical peak. Again, if you wanted to read textbook electrochemistry, which is why I'm doing this lecture, so you don't have to, um, but if you wanted to read textbook electrochemistry, you don't actually find much in the textbook talking about absorption. Um, you have to know that, that all of the absorption theory um, is under a section called a thin layer cell. Um, and so there's an idea in electrochemistry um, a tiny little cell called a thin layer cell, so let me see if I can draw a thin layer cell, where in this case you have your electrode, but beside it you have a tiny, this would just be like a wall, right, or something that would be in there. And so your cell where your dopamine could be located is only this tiny little thin, what we call thin layer, right? So there's your thin layer that's in there. And so you'll notice that it can't really get out. It can't really go anywhere, right? And it can't diffuse from far away because there's no such thing as far away from the electrode, right? Uh, and so if you do that, and they've developed all the theory for this, you get, you should get a signal that looks like this. That is what thin layer cell tells you you should get. Uh, it turns out delta E peak should be zero uh, because now uh, the, the, the peaks were slightly shifted before because of diffusion. If you take out diffusion, delta E peak should be zero. You should get, though, these perfectly symmetrical peaks. Um, and if this was, again, perfect, now we can do, it's really easy to do, IPA and IPC, and this is all perfect. IPA should equal. IPC. So that's thin layer cell uh, things, and all of the things for absorption come off of that. But the shape is really characteristic. Um, and so it turns out low concentrations, we see this characteristic shape that I've been talking about. However, if you did go to a higher concentration, get rid of thin layer cell, you go to a higher concentration, um, so again, a low concentration of dopamine might look something like this. But if you went to a higher concentration of dopamine, even with FSCB, you might start to see it kind of look like that. Um, so if you go to a high enough concentration, you can get to where diffusion is going to more control it. So just being a connoisseur of the shape tells you something about the kinetics of like, oh, I've got these really symmetrical peaks. Must be absorption. Ooh, it's hanging up a little bit. Uh, you know, that means diffusion is coming into play. So the shape of the CV tells you a lot. Um, and so we've lost the duck bill because it's absorption controlled. And, um, you know, if we, if we get it back, then we know we've switched over to diffusion. Now, I just told you, and I just erased it, um, that uh, if we did classic thin layer cell theory, that IPA, so the anodic peak, this would be IPA, should equal IPC, which is the cathodic peak, uh, which I've labeled on there. Um, and I didn't draw this incorrectly. They don't equal each other for dopamine normally. Uh, uh, so I, I uh, usually 
Uh, um, so this is ideal, and real is that our IP uh, um, C here is usually only about 60% or something like that of IPA. Uh, so this one, if this is two, this might be one, right? Something like that. They're not equal. This is substantially, IPC is substantially, can I get the less than, uh, IPA. It's noticeable, um, quite noticeable. In fact, it gets worse if you go in vivo. So this doesn't fit the theory. Theory, nothing we do today fits the theory, but this really doesn't fit the theory. I just told you it was adsorption, and now I'm going to tell you it's not even that. Uh, you know, that it doesn't fit the theory for adsorption either. Um, and so it doesn't fit the theory for adsorption. Uh, so what happens, we have to go back to our um, idea of dopamine and our redox reaction. Um, so again, this is a reversible reaction, let me write it as such. Uh, dopamine going to dopamine orthoquinone. And again, if I went back to my little electrode drawing where I have dopamine adsorbed to the electrode, it's going under, undergoing electron transfer um, to dopamine orthoquinone, it would also be adsorbed to the electrode. Um, and so, you know, this is stuck to the electrode surface, it leaches its electrons, it's still stuck to the electrode surface. Um, but if this one can adsorb, you know, so we had our dopamine in solution before, this one also can now desorb, that would be this process, and go back into solution. So it turns out that when you look at the kinetics of all of this, that dopamine itself adsorbs to the electrode, it sticks much stronger than a dopamine orthoquinone. So what happens, even on the time scale of this, like, 10 millisecond scan, dopamine goes to dopamine orthoquinone, dopamine orthoquinone falls off the electrode and I don't get a chance to reduce it. So, uh, you know, it, it's, it, the, the, the reduction, this sticking to the electrode is about 10 times the, the uh, um, uh, kinetic uh, kind of coefficient is about 10 times weaker. So dopamine likes to stick to the electrode. When it becomes dopamine orthoquinone, it doesn't like to stick to the electrode, it falls off. And so we only see a fraction of what we should see for reduction, quite frankly. The dopamine orthoquinone fell off, we don't see it. So this is a consequence of adsorption, again, but the adsorption of dopamine and dopamine orthoquinone um, are not necessarily the same. And so um, there are things out there now um, that uh, may be uh, correct for this a little bit, but this kind of classic shape not equal peaks is what people have seen. Okay, so the other thing that I realize I have not drawn up until this point, that, but we're to the point where we can understand it. So, so I've skipped it till this point, but we can now understand this, is that there's a little bit of a funky thing we do for FSCP, and that is we don't repeat them all the time. So if you were doing normal cyclic voltammetry with slower scan rates, and you wanted to do multiple scans, you do them like this, right? Uh, why wouldn't you just scan over and over and over again? And when you get to FSCV, we scan like this. And I tried to draw it kind of to scale. We didn't have to draw it to scale. The reality is this takes somewhat less than 10 milliseconds uh, on our thing. And then we hold usually for about 90 milliseconds, but the whole time is set to be 100 milliseconds between scans. So this is like nine tenths of our time we do nothing, so to speak, um, right? But we really are doing something, which is why we do it. Uh, and so all of that time, right, where we spend 90% of our time just hanging out, we're hanging out, right, at minus 0 0.4 volts. And I haven't been drawing dopamine exactly correctly. It turns out that dopamine is actually positively charged at our physiological pH 7.4. Um, so again, if it's positively charged, you can see that it would be really attracted to a negatively charged electrode, right? And so it would want to stick to that electrode. So what are we doing? This whole time is basically time to absorb, right? Um, absorb. 
uh, <laughs> adsorption, yeah, I know. Um, so that's time to allow it to adsorb to the electrode. So we've got this time, stuff can come stick, then we go up real quick and see what we got, so to speak. It's really like, again, electrochemical concept called stripping voltammetry, where you let stuff stick, then you go up and down real fast and see what you got. <laughs> really doing stripping voltammetry. Uh, but we don't call it that, um, uh, kind of thing. So up and back to see what you got. So we do this time, and if you cut back this time, you will see smaller signals. Uh, you will see smaller signals because you didn't get as much dopamine on the electrode. So we need this time to absorb. And so it's a really funky technique uh, in the respect that we can't quite go as fast as we'd like. Uh, and so the, the idea is, again, we, we, we typically go at 10 hertz, and it's simply a compromise. It's not, there's no perfect thing. It's a compromise between temporal resolution, right, and being able to go fast, because we want to see things quickly in the brain, and, um, you know, signal or current, right, uh, and being able to get enough signal, enough dopamine absorbed to the electrode. So it's not magic, 10 hertz isn't magic, but it is what the field normally uses. Um, and and uh, adsorption, again, is the answer for why we do this kind of uh, funky waveform as we go.